I think it was a, like a handicap. I had a, an eye problem. I was uh, cross-eyed, you know, or had a, what, they, what is known technically as an alternating squint. Mm -hmm. And um, uh, I think, you know, it just, you get a person like that and uh, they can. I, I'm quite sure that in my case that, you know, you'd go to a dance or party and you were self-conscious. And a lot of these athletes, or many good athletes, I think, might have a similar, I wouldn't call it a problem, it might be an asset in the sense that it drives them in another way in, 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 in the many cases in sport or the arts. It actually is a, I look upon that at my age as possibly not a detriment, but an asset because it will drive a person to the heights that they might never do normally. And I believe that be bold and mighty forces will come to your aid. And I believe that about everything. That's what we all do. We get to a certain age, we all stay in our comfort zone with our recliners watching television day in and day out. It's not worth it. I mean, life's so short and such glorious images in the world and such horror as well. But I want to see it all, and so I've moved out of my comfort zone. It's um, essential for me, otherwise I may as well die. So I've done it, I've broken every rule in the book, and um, not out of malice or any telling anyone that I'll show you, I did it for, to show myself. I've shown myself. I looked in the mirror, I thought, I'll show you one day. I've done something completely new. I wrote the music, and I feel limitless. So, no matter which route I took, because I cared about all of them, they all led to the same place. Well, I'll tell you, I've had this experience in my life not only once. I've had to lift myself about ten times. And uh, I know that in my life that I'll have to lift myself ten times more. And uh, I think I'm not the only one. I think that everybody has to do this. I thought maybe it's the old thing, you're the only one. But the only thing I know about life is, is, is that it's a series of lifting yourself up from one year to the next. Had I done what my father had wished me to do, which was to go into the office equipment business with him, which I knew I wasn't going to do, I knew I hated that, my life would have been unpleasant. And um, so I think it's very important not to do what your um, peers think you should do, not do what your parents think you should do, or your teachers. Do what's inside you. You don't set out to build a wall. You don't say, I'm gonna be, build the biggest, baddest, greatest wall that's ever been built. You don't start there. You say, I'm gonna lay this brick as perfectly as a brick can be laid. Yeah. And you do that every single day. And soon you have a wall. And soon you have a wall. We have to make our lives because life is tough. We have to believe in the power of life. Everything I did, I was following something I really cared about, something I loved, something I was passionate about. And I kept following that passion, whether it was cars, whether it was anthropology, uh, whether it was art, um, photography. Um, and eventually it led me to my huge passion, my real passion, which was making movies, which combined all of those things. Never, ever, ever give up. I think a lot of it comes down to, you know, a lot of people are like, oh, like, you know, you must be a super tough motherfucker and all this other shit. And I think it comes down more to just like how bad you want. 
Like in life, like if you just want something so fucking bad, like I just remembered like when I was doing the 50 meter underwater swim, it was really hard for me. I'd never been able to do it um, outside of, you know, seal training. And the only two times I did it was when I like had to do it. And I just remembered, I was just like, well, I'm just gonna swim until I fucking reach the wall at blackout. Like there just wasn't another option. Like I was just, like I just wasn't gonna quit just because I wanted it so bad. Nobody can guarantee we'll be successful, right? So. I think the only thing that can guarantee our success is keep the passion, keep believing the future. Now this is a natural process of life. It is not a misfortune to have to lift yourself up. It's a thing that takes place as you go through life. And you keep lifting yourself up, and you just continue to lift yourself up as long as, you can, uh, as, long as you're alive. That's the only way that I can see it. Pleasure is short-lived, uh, it lasts an hour, lasts a minute, lasts a month, um, and it uh, peaks and then goes down, it peaks very high. But the next time you want to get that same peak, you have to do it twice as much, you know, it's like drugs, you, know, just, you have to keep doing it because it insulates itself. On the other hand is joy. And joy is a thing that doesn't go as high as pleasure in terms of your emotional reaction, but it stays with you. Joy uh, is something you can recall. Pleasure, you can't. The secret is that even though it's not as intense as the pleasure, the joy will last you a lot longer. Everybody has talent, and it's just a matter of moving around until you've discovered what it is. Um, a talent is a combination of something you love a great deal, that's something you can lose yourself in, something you start at 9 o'clock. Look up from your work and it's 10 o'clock at night. In today's time, it's it's literally just about you realizing your own potential and being creative within your own potential. Mm -hmm. Oh, this is what I can do, so I need to master this, this, and this. Because you see, understanding gives us the ability, if we cannot see the positive circumstance on the outside, we can build it on the inside. That's why Napoleon said, circumstance, hell, I make them. George Bernard Shaw said people are always blaming circumstance for what they are. He said, I don't believe in circumstance. The people who get on in this world are the people who get up, look for the circumstances they want, and if they can't find them, they make them. They have the understanding they can do that. And through doing that and getting emotionally involved, they then set up an emotional state that's quite opposite to fear. It's called faith. But I haven't met anybody here at the Academy or anywhere else that hasn't been able to describe years and years and years of very, very difficult struggle through the whole process of, of you know, achieving anything whatsoever. And there's no way to sort of get around that. And uh, it, the secret is just not to give up hope. It's very hard not to. Because if you're really doing something worthwhile, I think, um, I think you will be pushed. To the brink of hopelessness before you come through the other side.
Another quality that I think is important is kind of being flexible-minded or open-minded. I'm not saying you shouldn't have a you know vision for, for your idea or your product, but you need to be open to changes. 